The United States has just confirmed its first human case of the flesh-eating screwworm parasite in decades, and the story is making headlines across the world. Health officials announced that the patient, a Maryland resident, contracted the infection after traveling to El Salvador, where an ongoing outbreak of screwworm infestations has affected livestock and, in rare cases, humans. While the patient has since made a full recovery, this case has reignited fears about whether this dangerous parasite could return to American soil. For those unfamiliar, the screwworm, scientifically known as Cochleomia hominivorax, is not your ordinary insect. It's a type of blowfly whose larvae literally feed on the living tissue of warm-blooded animals. When these flies lay eggs in an open wound, the maggots hatch and burrow deeper and deeper into flesh, creating excruciating pain, massive tissue damage, and if left untreated, even death. The name screwworm comes from the way the larvae twist into flesh like a screw. It is as horrifying as it sounds. The good news, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, is that there's no evidence of person-to-person -person transmission. The infestation spreads only when a fly lays its eggs directly into a wound. That means this Maryland case is considered travel-associated, and there is no sign that the parasite has established itself in the U.S. livestock population, or among humans, at this time. Still, for many Americans, just hearing the words flesh-eating parasite is enough to raise alarm. This isn't the first time the screwworm has threatened the U.S. In fact, decades ago, it was a major agricultural menace. During the mid-20th century, outbreaks of screwworm flies devastated cattle herds across the southern states, costing the livestock industry millions of dollars. The U.S. Government fought back with a groundbreaking program called the Sterile Insect Technique, where millions of laboratory-raised screwworm flies were sterilized and then released into the wild. By overwhelming wild populations with sterile mates, the pest was eventually eradicated from U.S. soil by the 1980s. But eradication doesn't mean extinction. Screwworms are still present in parts of Central and South America, and every so often, a case will slip across borders, often through the movement of livestock, pets, or even in rare human travel cases like this one. This is why the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, remains on constant guard. In fact, just weeks before this Maryland case was announced, the USDA revealed it is building a massive new sterile fly production facility in Texas. This site, located at the Old Moore Air Force Base in Edinburgh, will be capable of producing up to 300 million sterile screwworm flies per week. These flies will join the ongoing eradication programs in Panama and Mexico, creating a biological firewall to prevent screwworms from ever re-establishing in the United States. Federal officials are emphasizing that while the Maryland case is serious, the risk to the general public is extremely low. The parasite cannot spread like a virus or bacteria. It needs specific conditions to survive, namely, open wounds where adult flies can lay their eggs. Treatment, while painful, is straightforward, doctors surgically remove the larvae, clean the wound, and in some cases use special medications to flush out any remaining parasites. Still, the psychological impact of this story cannot be underestimated. People naturally fear parasites, especially ones described as flesh-eating. The very idea of a fly that lays its eggs in your skin and allows its young to chew their way deeper is enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. Media outlets have already begun labeling this the return of the flesh-eating screwworm, and social media is buzzing with images of past infestations that are disturbing to say the least. Livestock farmers, in particular, are watching this news closely. If screwworm were ever to spread unchecked in the U.S. again, the economic impact would be enormous. Cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, any animal with an open cut or sore, would be at risk. That is why the USDA is pouring resources into surveillance, prevention, and biosecurity. Detector dogs are already in use at ports of entry to sniff out animals that may be carrying larvae. Agricultural inspectors are trained to spot suspicious wounds, and international cooperation is key to preventing outbreaks from crossing borders. For the average person, however, the takeaway is simple. The Maryland case is a reminder of how interconnected the world is. A trip abroad can bring back more than souvenirs. It can sometimes introduce serious health threats. Travelers are advised to take precautions when visiting regions with known screwworm activity. That means protecting wounds, avoiding areas with high fly populations, 
and seeking immediate medical care if any unusual skin infestations develop after returning home. Public health experts are urging calm, pointing out that this was a single case, treated successfully, with no evidence of spread. But they also stress the importance of vigilance. Screwworm may be rare, but when it strikes, the consequences are severe. One untreated wound could become a breeding ground for hundreds of larvae within days. This is not just an unpleasant infection, it is a parasitic invasion that literally eats living flesh. So where do we go from here? The next few months will be critical for U.S. agricultural and health authorities. Surveillance efforts will ramp up, the new Texas facility will begin producing sterile flies, and awareness campaigns will help educate the public. Experts say that with quick action and continued international